All right, so now we're going to be playing Boros Prowess in Modern. Um, Prowess has changed a lot over the last, like, you know, six months, a year. Like, there's been a lot of big changes to the deck. Um, excuse me. Um, one of the big ones, a couple of the big ones are the fact that we're playing DRC and we're playing Ragavan now. Like, I'm not saying that that's bad or that that's wrong in any way. Those are great cards and they're phenomenal. Um, it just, you know, it used to be like Monastery Swiss Spear, Soul, Soul Scar Mage, and Bedlam Reveler were our options, and that's what we used to play. We're also playing Mendek Prismatic Ending and Path to Exile, which I'm not saying is wrong. I haven't played Prowess in a while, but it is very interesting. And the only burn spell we're playing is Lightning Bolt and Lava Dart, and then we're playing four Reckless Impulse and four a lot of the stage. That is very interesting to me. Um, Reckless Impulse is a very good card, but it is two mana, so... I worry about doing that. Um, Path to Exiles in the sideboard. Uh, the other two, the fourth Prismatic Ending in the sideboard as well. Um, we're playing a couple of core Firewalkers. Uh, I guess, like, we can't really afford to play um, Sanctifier and Beck in our sideboard with our deck and the way we try to use Lyris. Deflecting Palm is really good. I really like Deflecting Palm. Great against Hammer Time. Two Alpine Moon really helps us out against, like, Tron or, like, I... Um, Tron, uh, Valakut, like any of the primetime decks. Soul Guide Lantern and Relic of Progenitus are great graveyard removal. A lot of people play Relic of Progenitus in the sideboard of these, like, DRC decks, and I don't really understand why, if I'm being honest. Like, I understand that Relic's a very good card, but you're also turning off your 3-3, so I'm not a huge fan of that. And then the two Wear Tears are really good. Like, any artifact or enchantment removal, like, can really help us out along the way, so... This looks pretty sweet. I'm pretty excited to try it. Let's see. Modern League. Boros Prowess Modern. And <clears throat> we'll go ahead and jump in. We're playing Modern, so it shouldn't take too long to find the games. A minute or two at max, I would assume. Alright, I say that and we still haven't found a match. I haven't tried playing... <clears throat> I haven't tried playing uh, Prowess with Ragavan and DRC yet, so I'm pretty excited to try that. That'll be pretty fun. I have played Ragavan and DRC in a couple of modern decks, but I haven't tried it in... Have not tried it in Prowess, so... I think it gives us uh, a lot of good options. Uh, I like this hand. We'll lead on Soul Scar Mage. We'll cast Bobble, yield to the trigger, and then we will say go. During their upkeep, we'll bobble them. We don't want them to be able to Thought Seize us. It is Thought Seize, ironically, so. Windswept Teeth and Thought Seize in the same deck. So this is like Abzan or Jund or some kind of something like that. They'll either take Prismatic Ending or they'll take our Swiss Spear. Yeah, okay. And we will draw a card, draw a mountain, draw a DRC. We'll run out the DRC here. We have two types in our yard. Um, Lava Dart or Lightning Bolt will add a third type. Plus, if we can hit a land here, depending upon what our opponent does, we might be able to turn on DRC. Our opponent might just be might just be playing like green black. They might just be playing like the rock here. Creature, artifact, land, sorcery. Well, let's go ahead and cast it. Maybe we, maybe we end up in a spot where we can save our DRC here. Uh, 
That's pretty sweet. Being able to save our DRC that way is pretty awesome there. That felt pretty good. Uh, attack for four. Put our opponent to ten there. And then we're going to fetch shock for a sacred foundry and put Lyris into our hand. And say go. And I guess we shouldn't... We shouldn't yield here. We do have Lava Dart to play if we need to. Tarmogoyf, okay. If they shock in, I was like, they more than likely have a fatal push here. I think our opponent's just dead. Um, for two. Or maybe our opponent's not dead. I guess we don't have... Um, we're going to put that on top. This puts our opponent to seven. Again, we'll put it on top. And this is six, so the dart is like super lethal here. All right. Oh, we win game one against this Witherbloom Command Jun deck. Um, Prismatic ending is really solid here. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want Deflecting Palm in this matchup. Relic seems good enough here. I don't know, Path is pretty solid here. Let's look up this Witherbloom Jun deck. Go to the modern metagame and see what Jun looks like right now. I'm not seeing any list playing this Witherbloom command. I have seen people playing it, I just don't know what they're trying to accomplish here. Alright, it appears that like... Every Jun list I can find is just like typical Jun, so. We'll take out the paths here. Actually, I'd rather have the paths. Let's cut a couple of Reckless Impulse. Hitting the Reckless Impulse there was really good that last game. <clears throat> so our opponent on seven or six, they're on seven. We're also going to keep our seven here. Ho oh, ho! Our opponent almost passed through their whole turn. All right, we're gonna fetch shock here. Place with spear. They're probably gonna have a fatal push here. Um, they might just get a tap land. I'm not sure. Okay. That Witherbloom command is really good because it picks off Monkey and it picks off DRC. I'm not going to lie, I actually really like that card. Like in this, like, Jun deck, it feels really good. If our opponent says go here, I'm actually just going to attack with the Swiss Spear. And then if they let it hit them for one, I'm going to play DRC into a lot of the stage. The cool thing here is that we get priority um, over the triggers. Like now, granted, they can kill our, they can wither bloom command our DRC in response here, but um, put into our graveyard. All right, we found another land, which I don't really feel like we super needed another land, but it does make our lava dart better.
Ok. Let's try to dash in the Ragavan here and see what happens. Alright, our opponent probably has Fatal Push here. No. Well, I'm not casting anything else this turn, so I'm just going to hit him with this. Okay. Well, that feels pretty good. The fact that they didn't have Fatal Push there. God, have I missed so much of the metagame that we're just now in a spot where Fatal Push isn't that good anymore? Like, what a crazy thing to say out loud. Ooh, Torok. Okay, Torok's pretty good. Um, I'm going to kill it here. Now, granted, we have to discard two cards at random, but I do like getting rid of the Torok here. Okay. Hang on. Uh, Lightning Bolt's 10. Alright, so it's 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I think we're better off just casting Reckless Impulse here before combat. We put our opponent to 10. We say go during our upkeep. We're going to bobble them. Drawn to a Marsh Flats. They play said Marsh Flats. Torok number two is pretty good. Well. Hmm, that's tough. I mean, I guess we still have the Lava Dart from the Graveyard. Well. Hmm. Intertesting. Double Torok here was pretty good. Pro wide is pretty good. Let's see here. Now it's dumb to attack there, because we could kill it with the Lava Dart, but the only thing we're really doing is getting rid of our mountain there, and I feel like our land is just a better resource at this point. That's a pretty good one. Um, we're going to path the Scavenging Ooze here. And now they get to go to 10, or they get to go to 11, I mean. Are they attacking for 4, I was like, is the question here. Play Luris. Cast DRC. And then we're going to say go here. Our opponent has two cards, so it's not crazy to think that our opponent like has removal spells here, but they didn't play anything, so I'm thinking maybe our opponent's just flooding out a little bit here. We're just going to buy Lyris. I mean, DRC's uh, flying 3-3 here, so... Scavenging Ooze is pretty good. 
I guess they can eat our Ragavan, and then we still have Land Instant Sorcery. Yeah, we still have a we still have a three three here, so. Why they can eat Torok? Okay. Dark Confidant. Yeah, I'll go to 8 here. That's fine. Put that in the graveyard. Hmm. I'm gonna attack and see what they do here. They say go? They don't do anything. Yep. Put that on top. Um, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't have to take a life there, that was dumb. I didn't have to take a life there. That was just dumb on my part. Into the graveyard. Into the graveyard. Kill your scavenging ooze. And then we'll say go here. Now, they can't just get back their Lyris this They can get their Lyris this turn and then um, play their scavenging ooze here if they want to. E on one's pretty good. Okay. Reckless Impulse would be good here. Mistress Bobble is also really good. Um, we're going to put that in the graveyard. Put that in the graveyard. Look at your top card here. Torok, okay. Cast this. In the graveyard. In the graveyard. Let's attack. They can blow it up then. Oh, we're not going to attack with Lurus. That's mucho bad. Okay. We're going to go to five here, and then we're going to have no cards to discard. And then we are going to draw two cards off Bobble. Soul Scar Mage and Mistress Bobble, okay. Next turn we have DRC we can play from the graveyard. We're gonna block here. Not 
not letting our opponent put us to one here. That was a pretty bad play on my part off using the second bobble. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, we'll put that into the graveyard with a chance of finding something better. We can't attack here, so we'll just say go bubble them during their upkeep. See what they're drawing. Drawing an Urza Saga? Okay. I think our opponent has forgotten that their Lyris exists. <clears throat> Attack for three. We put our opponent to six. We cast the Soul Scar Mage here. Our opponent would probably honestly be really far ahead here if they had just like gotten their Lyris a long time ago because they could have played Scavenging Ooze and eaten our graveyard down. Yeah, like we, we would have lost we should have lost this game a long time ago. But our opponent's been kind enough to, you know, not make the obvious plays here, so we take what we can get. Fatal push off the top. Oh, they bought Lyris. How about that? Let's attack for three. Let's cast the DRC. We're just going to fetch for a basic here. Actually, was that just lethal? No, because they could have made a blocker. Yeah, it wasn't lethal because of the blocker. Because if we dash in Monkey, they're at 6. They block there, and then they, they block the Lurus, and then they take 3. But them being able to make the blocker is what changes everything. They'll probably make another token here. Actually, they probably won't. I mean, let's see. They can go to 4. Yeah, they're going to float a black here. Shadow Spear. That's really solid. Okay. Wow. Okay. Still have a black floating you haven't used. So our opponent's at two, and now they're about to go back to seven. They're gonna play EE on one.
There is a very slim margin for out here, but I think we do have an out. Land of the Graveyard, instant a sorcery, like bolt off the top. We'll sacrifice this out of black. Okay, that was weird. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way out now. We So if we hit a bolt there, cannot believe we lost that game. Our opponent played very poorly and we still lost that game. So if we hit a bolt there, we bolt them to four, and then we need to hit a sorcery or an artifact there. And there was zero bobble, so it had to be a sorcery there. So it was going to be tough, but we could do it from there. Um, Torok is really good here. I don't know if we want the... I think we'd rather just have the reckless impulse on the play here. Yep, we'll keep this. There's a lot of upside potential here if we happen to actually um, even if we don't draw into a land here, we have pretty good upside. Inquisition. Our opponent probably takes our loud at the stage. Hey, Kyle's playing New Vegas. They take Soulscar Mage. Interesting. Our opponent goes to 19. We cast a lot up the stage here. Surveil trigger. Um, we'll put that on top. That seems fine. Hopefully it's not like that in another land. Let's go ahead and cast this, actually. I think it has a lot of upside potential here to cast it. Because if we do, they're forced to pick what they want a Weatherbloom command here. If they even cast Weatherbloom command. We did see one last game. We saw one the first one, the first game and that last game. They might just have Tarmogoyf here. Um, if, they have Tor if they have any creature to try and block with here, we're in a pretty good spot. Because if they have Torok, we have Bolt. If they have Goyf or Scooz, we have Prismatic Ending. So the best thing they can have is a removal spell. Then you return a land card. All right, they returned. Uh, I can't remember what it's called right now. Urza Saga. They returned Urza Saga. All right, we put our opponent to fifteen. We're going to buy Lyris here and say go. Maybe they wanted to get the Saga in play. Maybe they didn't really have another option. All right. Get rid of the Goyf ca cast trigger. We'll put that into the graveyard. I think we'd rather find action here. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what they could do with this thing, but I don't I don't wanna let it stick around and find out, if I'm being honest. We'll put bolt on top. I like having another bolt in our hand. Put our opponent to twelve here and we'll say go. This is 
has been a very long first match. Like we finished our last league at like seven o'clock. Yeah, this this one's been going on for over thirty minutes now. Okay, Tarmogoyf. Use both of your okay. If we draw if we draw an untapped land here, we can play um, ending and then um, Lyris into Bobble. We'll put that into our graveyard here. Oh, Kyle's playing New Vegas again. There it is. This team is quick to let me know when my friends are playing stuff. We have five more points in our hand here. It's very possible that our opponent just gets like a Soul Guide Lantern here and turns our 3-3 into a 1-1 Shadow Spear. Okay. Our opponent goes to eight. Five mana. I hate to discard our Lyris, but... So... We bolt them to five, dart them to four... Discard our Lyris and then kill them. Okay. Unless he has like a Soul Guy Lantern in his hand. Um, we'll actually put that one on top because it's not a bad one to have. Soul Guy Lantern from the hand here is the only thing that's really a blowout against us. Like this is the, that's the only thing that's really a blowout against this play. All right, nope, just kidding, they concede. All right, well, they didn't have Soul Guide Lantern from the lap, so that worked out. Not gonna lie, the extensive removal, like, felt pretty sweet. I understand why we're playing all the, while we're playing Prismatic Ending um, and the Reckless Impulses, it gives us more sorceries for DRC, um, plus it's card advantage, and Prismatic Ending is just the best removal spell in the format right now, so. Uh... All right, one of the match number two here. Um, I really like this hand. Definitely going to lead on the Ragavan here. I don't know if that's all if that's correct or not, but I do like leading on the Ragavan. Presents the most upside. Um, and I am for the most part generally about plays that present the most upside. Amulet of Vigor, okay. Prismatic ending feels pretty good there. Um, this feels like a pretty good start here. We're going to look and see what's on top of their deck. A prime time? Okay. Well, let's get that thing out of here. Um... All right, well, we'll just put as much stuff as play into possible. Put as much stuff into play as possible. Feels pretty good. Draw a Lava Dart, okay. Vesuva. Bro, my internet died while I was playing Fallout and I wasn't earning channel points. 
<laughs> oh, Kyle, I'm sorry, man. That's rough. I'm sorry, buddy. I hate that. So I don't think... Yeah, we can't kill them here. We can hit them for 8, put them to 8, and then Dart is 2, so we can put them to 6 here. I think we're better off to just go ahead and attack. Um, hit him for four. I mean, what the hey? Let's play Dryad. I like it. Now all of my lands have all the colors. Big sad. Your mom added me on Snapchat today. You know, out of context, it sounds really bad, especially to the world that doesn't know we're cousins. But that's pretty cool. Mom's probably started Snapchatting. Guess I can't post about hooks and blow no more. <laughs> I mean, you can. Mom, like, mom will just tell your mom you can still, though. Oh, man, I could have played the Sunbait Canyon last turn. I wasn't even, like, thinking about that because we could have had... Um, the Sunbait Canyon would have... Uh, we could have cracked off that, man, off the uh, Dryad. See? Bad plays on my part. That's so weird, seeing all those colors like that. Um, two, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so it's exactly lethal. I doubt they have anything. Like, they could, but I doubt it. Um, Alright, cool. Well, that works out. Um, Deflecting Palm is really good in this matchup. Alpine Moon's really good in this matchup. I feel like Path is better than Prismatic Ending here, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, Wear Tear also feels pretty good. Maybe Alpine Moon is too much. Maybe these six cards are where we want to be. We Brantley leave in... A couple of endings here, and I mean, Ragavans are good. Soul Scar Mage seems good. Maybe, I don't know, DRC has flying. Maybe Swiss Spears are worst creature here. Maybe we want to try it like this. I'm not sure. Like maybe maybe Alpine Moon's good enough for the cut here, and I'm I'm just not that intelligent. That's very possible. Maybe maybe Prismatic Ending is better than Wear Tear. I know that Wear Tear also gives us the ability to Stone Rain them on Urza Saga. Um, that play feels more cute than it does good most of the time, but it is an option that we have. So. We don't have any of our sideboard cards here, but we do have turn one DRC into turn two light up the stage. Um, so I, I like this hand. As long as we don't get like turn two or something crazy here, then we're in a pretty decent spot. Guys, first I'd like to say thanks to Annie and everybody for coming and hanging out tonight. Appreciate you guys keeping me busy. Um, second, you just saw my cousin Kyle in the chat. Um, if you guys like Dead by Daylight or are big Call of Duty fans, um, check out his channel and his YouTube. Um, he's got some pretty great content. So our opponent mulligans to five. Leads on Teleria West tapped. We draw a second land. That's good. Wish it would have been like, you know, a inspiring advantage, but beggars can't be choosers, so. 
Hat plan, okay. All right, we're gonna hit our opponent for one, cast light up the stage. We'll put that on top, I like that one. Cast the Ragavan, try to get down here. I uh, hate that Deflecting Palm went to the wayside there, but it's okay. Hmm. So we know they have a forest in their hand. Um, we'll put that into the graveyard. Lava Dart. Ooh, we're going to put that one on top. Hit a forest. Okay. Well, I hate that we lost the Deflecting Palm, but it also feels like we're in the driver's seat for now, so... This feels really good. Also feels really sweet being able to cast Reckless Impulse before combat. Um, man, DRC and these Reckless Impulse effects are just awesome. We're going to Graveyard that one. Cast Bobble. Graveyard. Bobble. Look at your card. It's an Arboreal Grazer. Play the Canyon. Let's hit you for eight. I am not going to play the canyon. Um, Dart was not lethal there, so there's no point in getting rid of it. I am just going to hold up um, either side. We have, I mean, we have all of it here. Like, we can wear tear, we can path, we can do basically anything we want here, so... Opponent gets prime time, plays forest, plays prime time. Like, without amulet here or anything to do, like, I don't really think our opponent has an option here because we're just going to path them. Like, Radiant Fountain puts them to 10, and then they're just going to die this turn. We're going to put that in the graveyard. Pat this. They get to search for a basic. I don't... Do they have a third basic? Okay, they do. Okay. Um, and we're going to sack this to draw a card. Lava Dart is like Omega Lethal. Right? Hang on. Did I miscount? Oh, yeah. This The second mountain here. Do, 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 do. Graveyard. Lava Dart you. Put that on top. It doesn't matter. And then this is 368. Attack for 8. Oh my gosh. Wow. Alright, this deck has felt really strong so far. Um, like, we're probably just drawing hot, honestly. Um, I don't know. I have really enjoyed the deck so far, though. Prismatic ending, like the, I don't know, like the mix of eight card draw effects paired with the extra five pieces of white removal have been really good. Like Prismatic ending has been great. Game one, which out of my like Boros aggro deck is pretty surprising. It's not something I'm used to saying, but I have enjoyed it nonetheless. Good luck, opponent. Mm, my arm's starting to get pretty sore. I went and got my uh, my COVID booster um, today on lunch, and my arm's starting to feel pretty sore. I'm really hoping that that's the only side effects that I feel. 
Yeah, we're going to keep our seven here. I mean, this is really good. We're threat heavy with a card draw spell. Um, we are lacking in removal here. Oh. All right, so we're probably playing against Burn here, if I had to guess. We could also be playing against this, uh, the same the same version of Prowess that we're playing right now, so... We're gonna attack for one and say go here. Um, it's a bad matchup to not have a lot of removal in, so it's a little unfortunate. Double Inspiring Vantage is pretty solid for our opponent. Eidolon is really bad for us here. Um, Searing Blaze is also pretty bad for us here, but I can live with that more than I can Eidolon. Oh, so okay, so it's just definitely burn here. So. We go to 13. Dash in the monkey. Attack for three. Let's make a treasure token. Hopefully we get like a bolt or something. I'm down for that. Yeah, we will play your Swiss spear. I like that. Save our own creatures. Put the monkey back in our hand. Um, now that they know we have the monkey, there's kind of a little bit of like staring contest back and forth here because they can just timely hold up a spell to get rid of our Ragavan. All right, Searing Blaze us to 10. If they have a Lava Spiked or a Skewer, a Skewer here would be really good because they could deal with our other Swiss Spear. Okay, they're going to bolt us to seven, then put us to four. And with two cards in hand, we're more than likely going to lose game one here. All right, we're going to cast DRC. End of the graveyard. We need a land here. That'd be sweet. Path? Um, yeah, we'll put that into our graveyard. All right. Well, we have stemmed the bleeding for the moment. We just have to not die to the burn spells in their hand now. Which, at four, feels kind of inevitable. Lava Spike us. And then Skewer us. Eidolon. All right. So we're Eidolon locked now. Womp womp. Oh, I'm just going to concede. Like, we're not going to win the game here. I'm not going to play this out. Um, deflecting Palm is really good. Prismatic Ending, Core Firewalker. All these cards are really solid. I think having the two extra paths in is really good. I don't think we want too many Path to Exile effects. That is... Um, that it like the t too many removal spells, and we will lose the game. I think DRC is one of our worst cards in this matchup. No, we're bringing in two creatures so we can get rid of two creatures, and then I like leaving in the one reckless impulse. It's our worst card draw spell here. So, core firewalker, deflecting palm, and prismatic ending. Having six ways to deal with their Sanctifier and Vex slash Core Firewalker is really good here. And uh, I think that, like, that and Deflecting Palm is normally just a Lightning Helix. Like, most of the time in these matchups, it's just Lightning Helix, so. One of the things we do have to be careful to play around here is, yeah, I like this hand, um, that we do have to be careful to play around here is, I'm going to fetch shock here in case we draw into, in case we draw into a, uh, a core firewalker here. 
We'll say go and do it in their upkeep. Swiss Spear, all right. I, I can't, I was trying to say something a minute ago about playing around something, but I can't remember what I was going to say, if I'm going to be honest, so. Um, prismatic ending. We're going to get a basic here. Attack our opponent for two and then cast a lot up the stage. All right, double inspiring vantage is good. Like, I, I wish we didn't have both of them there. Um, having one is fine, though. This feels like a Sanctifier and Vic. Okay, well, we have Prismatic Ending for the other, for that, so that's okay. I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure here, actually. I'm just going to go after my opponent. It's a little aggressive considering we're playing the more, control the more controlling and slow style deck than our opponent here, but... Okay, Eidolon is fine. Deflecting Palm? That's a good one. I'm actually just going to go for it here, because if they don't block, they're dead. Putting our opponent to three here, and then we're just going to hold up Deflecting Palm, which basically just shows them that they can't do anything, because the second they actually play something, we'll kill them. So, and then we have Reckless Impulse to draw us cards. So, I don't know. Feels like we've won this game here. Okay. They sink. If they swing in with the clowns here, we will deflecting ball. Ragavan, okay. Yep, Ragavan again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just going to cast it now. Like, if they have Helix, they go to five. Yeah, they're right. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. I mean, we need answers to that, so maybe we want to cut. Like, we need answers to their threats here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like... Well, Chicago's losing to Atlanta, 36-31. Now, <laughs> this is a lot of damage to take here off of our opening hand, off the opening lands here, but it is very good. Kind of wish that one of these was an inspiring advantage, but... Okay, well, we're not playing that. Um, we will say go here. We have Path or we have Lightning Bolt, whichever one we need.
Sanctifier Invec. Rift Bolt. Double Rift Bolt. Okay, they have a Sunbake Canyon. I'm going to do it again. Like, I know that they're what their card is, but I just really want to draw two cards here. Give ourselves more chances as, at an Inspiring Vantage. And we're going to say go here. So they have to have Path here to prevent the life gain. Like, if they Path... All right, they don't have Path. Undo yield through this turn. Always yes, always yield. Now I can six because I want to click yes the whole time. Then we go to 12, then we go to 13, then we go to 10. So all their rift bolts are basically shocks here, which feels pretty good. Also counts for all of our spells too. Our opponent buys Lyris. That that feels pretty good. Um, we're going to dash our Regavan here. We'll go back to 10. So our Fetch Slam is basically free. And I'm attacking with both because I really want to try and end the game here. Yeah, I mean, take that. Deal damage to them. It's free points. Like, Ragavan is so good in, in against Burn because it's just pulling all of their Burn spells most of the time. Or it's taking cards that you either can't cast or you wouldn't want them to have. So, All right, we go to 12. Yep, we go to 10. Our opponent gets a basic here. Our opponent concedes. All right. Well, feels pretty good. I mean, we're 3-0 and so far, so... We just kind of... Like, we had a... I don't know. We've had good hands. Like, we've been drawing well, and, like, we've had good hands with this deck. Like... L... Like you, you hate to kind of draw it up that way, but sometimes you just run hot, and that's just all there is to it. If I didn't have to buy Ragavans, I'd put this deck together in real life. Like, I put it together in paper. Problem is that I have to buy Ragavans for basically any, like, any red pile that plays Ragavan. I just have to buy it, like. I'm not a huge fan that we don't have a threat here, but I do like having Prismatic Ending into Reckless Impulse, so that feels pretty solid. Four lands is more than I'd like here, but... I think we, we have a potential for a lot of good draw steps here. Black Cliff Cliffs, I was like, more than likely means. Um, so Black Cliff Cliffs more than likely means like discard effect, which would have been pretty good against us. Oh, it's Dredge. Well. Uh, we have three pieces of Graveyard Hate post-board, so. Stash in Ragavan here. We have, a, we have an open opportunity to hit Ragavan, to hit with Ragavan, so. Um, we cannot cast Silver Smoke Ghoul, but that's okay. Like our opponent has another cathartic reunion effect. Dredge five more. 
Funny part is Creeping Chill really doesn't bother me like it used to. Like, Creeping Chill, like, when you're playing Burn, is back-breaking. But, like, it, like when, when I'm playing this, I'm not going to lie, like, it honestly doesn't feel that scary. Which is a very weird thing to say. Exiling our opponent's Ox of Agonis is pretty sweet. Uh, cast Reckless Impulse. Say go. Oh, they just took a draw step there. Man, wish I would have been... I, it, see, if I'd have taken enough time, I would have looked and bobbled them during their draw step. And our opponent says go. Okay. Bobble them now. Dark Blast. Alright, our opponent might have another Dark Blast in their hand. Or they definitely have a Dark Blast in their hand. Hmm... All right, so. Let's cast Ragavan. And let's buy a Lyris. Because we know that they're just going to um, kill one. So we're just going to discard one of their pitch lands here. We know that they're just going to Dark Blast it. Um, discard the Wooded Foothills here. I'd rather have the Sunbait, Sunbait Canyon to help us draw a card. Narc Amoeba kind of really gets this whole train going because they get to put two prized amalgams into play here. Alright, so what are we looking for here? So... They don't have Dark Blast. Or if they do, they have a third Dark Blast in their hand. So we can start with Lava Dart. Dash Ragavan. Put our opponent to 20. Hit a Cathartic Reunion. We can go white, red, blue here. Cast it for three, get rid of one of those. I'm not gonna lie, this kind of feels like a losing fight because they have Conflagrate in their hand and they have two more Creeping Chills in their deck. At least two more Creeping Chills in their deck. So this kind of feels like a losing battle here. They put us to nine and then Conflagrate puts us to one. At least I would think they're going to cast Conflagrate here. It's for eight. It's as, basically for as much as you're ever going to get at this point in the game. No, they don't. All right. Cast Lyris. Cast Bobble. And we will say go. Try to stink we nimp, okay. I don't know, like, if we can hold out for a turn or two here without getting into Conflagrate range, like, there's a chance that we could pull this off. Um, I think plus Lurus can start gaining us life this coming turn. Like, it might only gain us two life because of the Dark Blast. Or maybe our opponent has a double Dark Blast in their hand. We've only seen two, so we know they have one. 
but they are running out of cards here, so they have to make something happen. Of course, I guess they can just conflagrate and wipe out our board here. That puts us to three, which puts us in range of one conflagrate here. Uh, or not one conflagrate, one... Um, I can't remember what it's called right now. It is Golgari Thug. Alright, so let's start by lava darting our opponent here, casting light at the stage. Oh, wow. That's right, we're out of basics. So... Hang on here. Lava dart, sack that. All right, we're going to one here, putting our opponent to seven. Or taking seven, they go to 12. And then we sack this for a red and play Soul Scar Mage. And then we're giving ourselves an out to kill them next turn as long as they don't have a way to kill us here. But more than likely, they dread... Ooh. Oh, no! They hit Ox. But... Will Ox kill them? While they're dredging? I don't know how that works, if I'm being honest. Of course, I guess all they have to do is hit one and then not dredge and then just draw a couple cards. Wow. Hmm. Man, that sucks. Oh well. Oh, well. We come up one turn short there, but that's okay. Um, ending. Path. Don't think we want Moon or Deflecting Palm or Wear Tear here. We can cut a couple of Reckless Impulse here. We can cut a couple of DRCs. I hate to cut so many, but I think that's just where we got to be right now. Keeping their graveyard off the field is very important here, so... I like the idea of having this hand off the back that we can light up the stage into hopefully more lands with double removal spells here. I think when we're playing offense, this is okay. I think when we're playing defense, not having... Um, I think like when we're on the draw, we run into not having graveyard hate problems. Plus our opponent's on a mulligan to four here. Like pretty quickly they mulligan to four. So their seven, six, and five must have been pretty bad here. Um, if we can... Like, if we can cobble together, like, a couple threats and some pretty aggressive pressure here early on in the game, we're probably in a pretty good spot. If our opponent mulligan just for Leyline of Sanctity, um, I have pretty bad news for our opponent. We're playing Prowess, not Burn, so it's pretty, uh, pretty... I mean, it's not irrelevant, but it's irrelevant. The only way that this really ends poorly for us here is if... We uh, miss a uh, land off light up stage. Hitting any land here is great because it gives us the ability to play Soul Scar Mage.
Hitting double land is really good. Opponent goes to 18 to cast other will to gaze. I mean, I guess they don't really need Cathartic Reunion and Dredgers anymore. They can just have that. Hadn't really considered that as an option there. That's pretty solid. <clears throat> they hit Narc Amoeba? Okay. They do not have eight cards to exile with Ox, and they do not have enough cards to discard with Cathartic Reunion. They're going to 16 here to cast Otherworldly Gaze, which is fine. We're going to play Swiss Spear, play the Mountain. We're going to play the Mountain, play Swiss Spear, and bolt the Narc Amoeba here, and then get in for a bunch. And then we're going to, because the bolt's not going to do as much here, we'd rather save the path um, for things that it's better against. Uh, yeah, we'll save the path for, like, the Ox or something. Um, I think a lot of the stage off the top was a really good draw here. Wish we had Soul Guide Lantern to play. <laughs> it feels like it's just a turn late there. Um, but, I mean, Soul Guide Lantern is still okay because we have... We have Path Path into Lantern, which is really solid. Like, I'm pretty sure the game's just over here. Like our opponent has to do some pretty stacked stuff here. Like they could hit multiple creeping shields here, and that could that could buy them mul that could buy them an extra turn here. But uh, like they may not kill us this turn, but I think the game is over. Okay, they hit two Creeping Chills on the last one. Now, the fact that they hit all their Narc Amoebas is pretty solid because that gives them pretty decent blockers. Um, Lava Dart would be awesome here. Um, conflagrate. We're going to cast path on the ox. They don't have a basic. That's fine with me. Um, I'm going to attack for nine here. See how they block. I'm just going to let them dredge here because they don't really have anything they can do that scares me. Now, them hitting that is pretty sweet for us because that gives us the ability to sacrifice our Soul Guide Lantern now and stop that. Nothing happens, and now we have Path for the prize Amalgam. I'm actually curious to see how they attack here if they just get busy with everybody. Yeah, I'm willing to take four and go to seven here, um, just to see what they do. So we're going to go ahead and actually we're just going to wait because it's like super lethal next turn if we wait.
I don't have a basic to search for, and then we're going to prismatic ending this. Say okay, and then we're going to attack for nine. Our opponent probably concedes here. All right, cool. So I still don't think wear tear is worth it here, honestly. Um, I don't know. I kind of like it the way that we have it. Everything is just really good removal spells. Like, we just have creatures and good removal spells, and we just need a piece of graveyard hate here. Like... If they want to, like, mulligan to ley line, like, they can. Like, when I'm playing burn, like, that, that scares the crap out of me. Like, the fact that my opponent can mulligan to four, have a ley line of sanctity, and have a good hand. Like, that, do, that does scare me a little bit, but... So, I really want to keep this hand, but we don't have any graveyard hate. So, I just, I don't see us winning the game here. I think this hand's a lot better. We can keep this and put the... Lava Dart back. We'll definitely lead on the Soul Guide Lantern here. They're going to cast Other Worldly Gaze at the end of our turn. And then we're going to 2 here, um, just in case they do something crazy. Yep. kind of weird how good other worldly gays made this deck <laughs> like honestly like i mean it loses to like <clears throat> an abundant of graveyard hate so i don't know if i'd want to say it's like gas or anything but it does help a land here would be awesome because we could dash in our ragavan um I think I need to get my Ragavan down to have potential here to produce um, treasure tokens to try and give us, like, kind of help us get more lands going here. They put Dark Blast. All right, so them having Dark Blast is annoying. They put Dark Blast, Gemstone Mine in the graveyard, leave one on top. They don't dredge there. Okay. We're going to bolt this guy. Attack for two. Hopefully hit something reasonable, like meaningful here. Feel pretty good about that one, I won't lie. Um, get Soul Scar Mage down. I think getting to play a removal spell and getting to play... Um, Alright, so they dredged Dark Blast that time. Getting to play a removal spell and getting to put a creature into play because a Ragavan was really solid there. So if they want to Dark Blast my Ragavan this turn, they can. Sorry, there's like a gnat or something in my room, like in the, in the room here. It's driving me crazy. All right, it's a few lands from our opponent. We're going to attack for three here. Really wish I had a way to protect my um, Ragavan. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna lava dart the Narcomoeba here, and we're going to force our opponent um, to cast the Dark Blast here if they want to deal with our Ragavan. I was like, I imagine they will. I don't know what our opponent's holding on to here. I 
I think we're just going to go ahead and do this. Like, we had a path to beat it, but I think we're going to go for this play and see if our opponent's just out of resources. I doubt they are, but I don't know. Now that I've made that play, it feels a little greedy to have made it. Because we had a path to beat that, so... Yeah, if we lose this game, it's because we misplayed. Wow, and they just had that? Okay. Yeah, so we just kind of threw this game away here. We, we had this game locked up, I feel like, and we just kind of threw it away. That was just a misplay on my part. All right. Our opponent's going, oh, how the turns have tabled. And we are I'm gonna say go here. I'm gonna attack here and see what they do. Okay. Gonna hold up the path here. We have instant creature um, artifact, so we have to hit a land or a sorcery here to turn on DRC into a 3-3. Three, three. Mm. All right. Yeah, I think we're still gonna lose this game here. We just don't have enough pressure. If they attack with everything, we're taking five and going to eight here. And then they just get to play Ox after combat. Or I guess they're going to play other worldly gaze and then play Ox. And the good news is that they have to go to... They have to take one to... Play the ox here but the bad news is that if they don't run out of cards here the ox probably wins the game wow all right that's pretty good Okay. Prismatic ending this, put everything else on the stack. Put that into the graveyard, exile that, and then they have four attackers, and oh, and I have to attack with the, okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that I had that game won, and I threw it away by getting rid of my um, Graveyard Hate too early. Like, I, I had a path. I should have just let them have the let them have the prize amalgam. I just, like, I don't know what I was thinking there. That was, that was a very bad play on my part. Because I'm pretty sure if we don't do that, just based on the way the game plays out, they're forced to play one of their discard effects... And they have to discard something relevant or do something or we're just going to let them sit there. Um, yeah, we had that game locked up. I just, I played very badly there. So that was complete punt on my part. All right, Chicago's battling back. 69-63 at halftime. Glad we're not going to roll over to Atlanta. All right, let's, let's get this 4-1 here. Okay, I like this hand. Okay. 
Our opponent also keeps seven. They have no companion. Cast Bobble. We're going to put that one on top. Um, we're going to say go. Bobble them now. See what their thought sees. All right. They'll either play a removal spell here, or they'll have, uh, or they'll cast their Thought Seize. They might have an IOK here if they're playing Thought Seize. They're more than likely playing IOK too. Juliana of the Veil. Okay, so this is just like Jund. I'm just going to attack for one here and see what they do. My opponent's obviously okay with taking one here. Play a Soul Scar Mage, and then I'm going to play the... Nope. I'm going to play the Inspiring Vantage. Our opponent's fetching for Fatal Push here, or our opponent is fetching for something tapped. Okay, definitely Fatal Push. Fatal Push the Soul Scar Mage, I imagine, because I think holding... Mm, go for the DRC, okay. I mean, it makes sense. I guess, like, they don't want us, like, filtering through our cards here, trying to find something. And they have they probably have lots of answers for our Soul Scar Mage here, so... Probably taking one, well, I don't know. They're probably taking one of the prismatic endings here. Yep. Play Raging Ravine. So this is just like, this is Jun Jun. Okay. Just gonna buy Luris here and attack for one. I mean, let's see, that's four points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like we can put our opponent to five and then we're left with a prismatic ending and an inspiring advantage. I don't think that's really our best line of play, but. Just gonna go ahead and get a few points in here with the lava darts. I'm not gonna get rid of anything because I want to I wanna be able to play like Luris into like DRC if we find it here. I guess if I get into a really desperate spot I can just play Luris and then just like play Bobble. Season Pyromancer, okay. Discards Tarmogoyf and K Command. It's very interesting. Play Lyris. Play DRC. And then we'll say go. I'm willing to get rid of one of my mountains here if they're willing to make like a, an interesting trade here. We're kind of just hoping that our opponent doesn't like peel into a black source for their Liliana of the Veil here. All right, I'm willing to make that attack. We're not wasting any resources and we're getting rid of one of theirs. So feels like a feels like a pretty good exchange for us. They didn't have a bolt or an unholy heat there. So that felt pretty good. Bloodbraid Elf into IOK. -okay. They're going to cast that, take our Prismatic Ending. Hopefully.
hopefully there's no fatal push there. Um, fatal push on our DRC would be pretty bad for us. Or our opponent just concedes. Cool. All right. That feels pretty good. Kind of surprising, if I'm being honest. But, you know, you take what you can get here. Um, Prismatic Ending felt moderately bad there, honestly. Like, it just didn't feel great in that spot. Um, this is one of those situations where I feel like our four Reckless Impulse and our four Lot Up the Stage will be pretty solid. The question is, what are we looking to bring in? Deflecting Palm is a good card here. Like, uh, let me rephrase that. Deflecting Palm is good against Tarmogoyf in this situation. It can also situationally be good against um, Raging Ravine. Wear Tear doesn't seem to have much value here. I don't think bringing in the other Prismatic Ending is worth. Core Firewalker's bad. Um, there's some argument to bringing in the other two Path the Exiles. And I don't think Soul Guide Lantern's worth, but there is some argument to bringing in Relic of Progenitus. To try and, like, whittle down at Tarmogoyfs. Maybe we're bringing in these. This is a very grindy matchup, so I feel like I want all of these. Maybe I can cut a Prismatic Ending. Leave in one Prismatic Ending? No, well... Yeah, no, we definitely want at least two of those. And we cut a Swiss Spear. It feels like our worst creature here. Try it like this. I don't I don't know how else to sideboard for this matchup other than to shave numbers. Um, so, that's what we're going to try. Uh, this hand feels really solid. We'll keep this. Inquisition. Probably take one of our threats here, or, I mean, we have double removal spell here, so it's not likely that our opponent would take a um, take the Prismatic Ending or a Path here. They might take our Reckless Impulse. Yeah, I was like, that's also an option. They could just have a couple of removal spells in their hand, and they're like, well, let's take their card draw. And that makes sense. Run out of threat and say go here. Drawing into a second Reckless Impulse is really good. <sighs> Alright, our opponent goes to 16. Our opponent having to play three colors and having to fetch in multiple times here has been pretty good for us. Terminate. Alright. I think it's better to have a threat in play and hold up the Reckless Impulse. Um, Reckless Impulse, like, does give us two free cards here that we know we're not losing anything. But... Liana the Veil is really good there. That is also one of the downsides of running out Soul Scar Mage. Um, is... Liliana the Veil. Now, we have lots of outs here to deal with Liliana, Lava Dark, Lightning Bolt, um, Dash Ragavan... I'm going to fetch here because the odds of us hitting two lands are pretty low. And if we do hit a land, we can just play the one that we hit next turn. I'm going to go ahead and Lightning Bolt to Liliana just because I don't want it picking our hand apart. And if you've ever, like, if you play a lot of modern, you've more than likely played against Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Um, unless you started playing a lot of modern in the last six months, and then you probably haven't. Um... But if you have, then you know that Liliana of the Veil can really pick apart your hand very quickly. Drawing a card, getting your land back. Okay, that seems pretty good. Our opponent's trying to generate some value here. So I don't know. Even if we do hit a land, there's a potential that we hit an, a uh, tap land. So I'm just going to get rid of the Rin um, for good here and say go.
We could have cast the Reckless Impulse and taken a chance that we hit an untapped land and then tried to play the Prismatic Ending, um, but we're coming up with we're coming up with reasons that we're wasting cards and uh, and that we just don't get to kill the Wren. And them getting to draw another card and buy back their Peatland here this turn would have been pretty brutal for us. Cascade and a Croxa. Okay, we'll discard our Lava Dart here to the Croxa. And then we have Path to Exile for the Bloodbraid Elf. So our removal is feeling pretty solid here. We're keeping their stuff off the board. The problem is, is that they're at 13. And we've only done one point, or no, we haven't done any points of that actually. But this is pretty good here. Swiss Spear into Reckless Impulse feels pretty solid. It was a very good draw and drawing a threat. Not only drawing a threat, but drawing a hasty threat at that. We're going to bobble during their upkeep. All right. So they have a Fatal Push that we know about. That's fine. Um, they can Fatal Push. No, they'd have to have a Fetch Land here. They can Fetch Land, Fatal Push, and play Kroxa. Now, this does put them to 8, and we do lose one of our Prismatic Endings, so that leaves us with three Paths as outs. And then... Yeah, I'm just going to 6 here. Season Pyromancer is really good. Discard Renin 6 Bolt, draw into land an unknown card. Draw a card. The Bobble. Draw into a Canyon and Inspiring Vantage. Cast a lot of the stage for retail here. It's not something I'm a huge fan of doing, but... Alright, we're going to go to 17, play Soul Scar Mage here. And then we have Inspiring Vantage to discard to the Croxa next turn, and then we get to follow it up with Prismatic Ending. Um, okay. I imagine our opponent would have played the Fatal Push there if they would have had it. Or the, uh, you know, insert removal spell there. I guess it is possible that they had Unholy Heat and they didn't want to... And they didn't want to uh, get rid of... And they didn't want to take damage for the Blood Crypt there to cast Unholy Heat. Mm, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough because now they're going to put Croxa into or yeah, now they're going to put Croxa into play. They have to tap their mana the right way, but red, black, black, red, and then they get to go, they go to ten, put Croxa into play. We discard Inspiring Vantage, and we're not in a great situation actually. That collective brutality was really good for our opponent there. Our opponent attacks, we're going to block a token and take three. Start by drawing a card here. DRC is a good card, but I don't really feel like it's going to get us out of this situation here. We'll buy Lurus and say go. Not going to lie, we're going to... We're in a pretty bad spot. This is a definitely a losing position here.
Having the other two prismatic endings in to beat up on Kroxa is really good. But the problem that we ran into last game, like one of the issues that we had is that the prismatic ending just wasn't all that in a bag of chips against the Liliana, and it wasn't that good against the Season Pyromancer. Um, oh, man. Yeah, we're just throwing this in front, taking four. Plays a land and says go. All right, so we play Lyris. We cast Bobble, and we have to hit Path off of the Bobble. Dothy's pretty good. We will say go. If we hit Path off of the Bobble, there's a chance here. A fatal push. Now they're going to create two tokens. Okay. I mean, we do have Lava Dart to deal with one of the tokens, so it's not like it's like this. Hmm. So we go to one, block that. Or no, we don't go to one. We stay at four because we discard the DRC. We block the Kroxa with our Lyris. Go to seven. Take six, go to one. I'm going to block the Kroxa. Sacrifice one of these so I can stay at two this way. At least it gives me options to use my um, Sunbay Canyon. Take a draw step here. Not likely that it actually has something, and we're probably just giving away more information by playing our Ragavan than anything else. Well, if I could play my land, that'd be a good one to play, but... All right. Let's see here. So, I mean, again, we go back to our point, is Prismatic ending good enough in this matchup? And, I mean, I don't know. Like, it hits a good portion of their deck, but there's also a good portion of the deck that it doesn't hit. Like, do we just bring it in and hope it's good enough? Yep, let's try it with four. Maybe we don't need all four. Maybe like three is correct instead of two. That was a thought that ran through my head, but... Yep, we'll keep this. I like this hand. Bubble's really good because it just gives us a couple of new cards. Kind of bobble during their upkeep, and then we'll bobble at their instep. Uh, yield until next instep. Oh, our opponent almost clicked through their turn. I chose not to play Inquisition, which means they have a Fatal Push or a Holy Heat or something here. Question is, what are they fetching for here? Okay, so it's like a, it's on holy heat here. Mm, bolt. Okay. We'll say go. We 
know they don't have the Inquisition anymore. Take a lightning bolt, okay. Test you to see if you have another bolt here. All right. Blood Crypt hits the Exile Zone. Put Ragavan back into our hand. Um, a, a good reason to dash Ragavan there um, instead of... Uh, now Spellbomb. Instead of uh, just casting it there is... Uh, Liliana is a good one during their turn. And it gives them more sorcery speed options to kill it. I'm going to go for it again. They might have a Fatal Push or something here. Okay. Two turns in a row. Our Ragavans hit. Um, uh, yes, please. We will take a Tarmogoyf. <laughs> Feels pretty good to me. I mean, that's fine. They get to target whoever's graveyard they want. They're going to draw a card here. They're targeting mine. We still have a 4-5. Um, having, we have three removal spells in our hand. I'm sorry, we have four removal spells in our hand and card draw. So, it feels like we're in a pretty good spot this game so far. Like, this could turn south quickly, but this feels okay. Imagine our opponent's getting a Blood Crypt here. Just getting a basic Swamp, okay? Just Liliana, Okay. Yep, we'll sacrifice your Tarmogoyf, that's fine. So I'm actually going to attack them, especially because we hit a land. Okay, that's probably one they wish they could have. Definitely going to Lava Dart this so it can't just sit here and pick our hand apart. Slowly but surely, we're whittling them down here. Dothy? I'm not super worried about Dothy because they... They can't block our Ragavan here, and we are winning the race. Like, we could just, like, bolt it in step here, but I don't know. It feels like a little too much. I haven't seen an Unholy Heat for my opponent yet, and I'm kind of surprised because I feel like Jund is one of those decks that naturally hits Delirium pretty easily. So... Well, a lot of the stage is really solid. Maybe they drew a removal spell. Like, there's no guarantee that we just get to, like, hit them with the monkey over and over again until the game's over. Like, this is really good. And, man. We get, I mean, we get to make more bodies off of this. Yeah, I think we gotta cast this one. Like, I think there's too much value in, in not... Like, there's just, like... Now, granted, we get to give our opponent some cards here, but we're gonna give them Dart and Impulse. I'm just going to hold up Bolt here and say go. I don't know if, the, if they're like, is, 
as traditional Jund as it seems, I think there's a danger that we're walking into damnation because I have played against Jund players who play that randomly. And in the format with, like, hammer time and a lot of stuff, our opponent might want just some massive, like, sweeper here. So I think playing Soulscar Mage is a little bit, is a little dangerous here, and I think we are overcommitting. Don't really know what our opponent's doing right now, but I have to say, I know I said it earlier in the stream, but I changed out the sleeves on my like shuffling cards, and I'm really a fan. Weather the storm. All right, go back to seventeen. I have to say, I was not ready for that one. All right, opponent. I see you. Whether the storm could have been like, like could buy our opponent just enough time to get back into this game. Our opponent's either lagging here or they drew something pretty good. I can't really decide which it is. Mm. Kill Dolphy in response. They're going to target one of my exiled cards, which is fine. And then they'll probably take a lot of the stage from my hand if I had to guess. But yeah, a lot of the stage seems like the obvious choice here. And then they cast. Then they cast Reckless Impulse. All right. All right, that seems pretty good. This card, Liliana the Veil, draw two cards. Okay. I mean, I imagine our opponent's casting the Nile Spellbomb here. They shock in. Okay. I'm going to attack for two here and see what our opponent does. Okay. Um, we're going to fetch for a basic here. Cast the Ragavan. Kill the Stake Mancer. I 
And then we're gonna buy Luris. And we're gonna say go. All right, Luris and Prismatic Ending has leftovers here, not bad. Okay. This Bloodbraid Elf, was that your last, is this your last card? I mean, BB is pretty good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use Prismatic Ending on the Nile Spellbomb. We're forcing our opponent to get rid of it. They get to draw a card and make tokens here if they wish, so that's kind of a bummer. We're going to attack. He's going to make tokens here. Which is fine. He's going to throw one in front of the Ragged Man for sure. Opponent goes to 11. Play Lurus. Cast Ragavan. And say go. So our opponent may not have been casting Bloodbraid Elf last turn. They may have just been like trying to cast the or do the tokens main phase. Let's draw an extra card here. We're going to send him with the clowns here. Okay. Um, that's fine. Keeping my Lyris alive is definitely worth a path to exile here. Plus, it's an extra point from the Soul Scar Mage. They probably don't have another basic. Our opponent goes to nine. We cast the Ragavan. And I'm not going to play the Luris, or I'm not going to play the Soul Scar Mage because, again, I feel like we're overextending a little bit here. Um, I feel like having three threats in play with our opponent at nine is good enough for now, anyway. All right, we have three card types in our yard Instant Sorcery Land. All right, well, I'm going to shove him with the clowns here. I've been saying that phrase a lot lately, and I don't know why. All right, they're going to kill our Luris. They take three. That's pretty sweet. We uh, definitely take that. And cast BBE. Cascade. Ho ho ho, cast a reckless impulse. Mm, nom nom nom, that feels pretty good. Alright, we're gonna say go here. There was like a turn or two there where our opponent kind of turned things around, and if they had, I think I've hit every land in my deck. Um, yeah, where if our opponent hadn't been flooding out and they had drawn into something like useful there, they probably would have been able to boot win the game, honestly. So, all right, but luckily for us, our opponent did not, and we finished with a 4 1. 
Um, should have been a 5-0. We should have got the trophy from this league, but I punted against Dredge earlier. So, um, I have to say, I think this was the funnest Ragavan deck I've played so far. Like, I, I, I always really like Prowess, and I really like how we have the eight draw spells here, and you're looking at Path and Prismatic Ending as removal spells. I don't know. I just feel like the deck has a a lot of really good cards here. Like, it just feels really good. Ragavan beating people up over time, like, and DRC, plus, like, some of the best one-drops, in my opinion, like, probably ever in Swiss Beer and Soulscar Mage. As red aggro creatures, let's not all lose our minds at one time. But, so... I don't know, the deck was really cool. I've, I really enjoyed playing this deck. It was a lot of fun.